Thank you. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I, I, I have to speak on the, the interaction on, between technology and uh, market structure. Uh, and uh, undoubtedly, uh, the, this is a raising question today. Uh, we have already witnessed a, uh, an important evolution in the functioning of the market, even a, a thanks to or because of a major and rapid changes in uh, technology uh, around the, the markets. Uh, we have, of course, uh, experienced major technological glitches in the US, even a few days ago in India. Uh, and uh, this question now um, may eventually impact investors' confidence in the functioning of the markets. At the same time, technology obviously brings a potential of benefits for the market and their participants. So my remarks today will therefore try to provide some examples of the benefits of technology, because Usually, we are focused on the problems, um, but also on the risk and potential detrimental effects on the functioning of the markets. And some, I would also um, say a few words about some, some of the solutions that we are currently contemplating. So first, I should say that uh, the question is not to be in favor or against technology. It would make no sense. We can't go back to the Stone Age. Uh, and the issue of ethical neutrality of technology has been greatly debated in philosophical, philosophical sorry, cycles since ancient Greeks. So it's not really a, a new question. Uh, of course, the central point here is that technology is not by it itself a means to an end. Um, technology may allow us to keep doing stupid things, which means on a greater scale and with more significant consequences, in clever ways. Our job is then to put design into technology. What can our technology tools be used for? Financial markets and their participants, including regulators, shall become more mindful users of technology. Trading ad algorithms are not new. They have been made possible by the real-time quotation systems introduced in the 80s. Technology allows, for example, for, to liquidate large positions with a limited impact on the market more easily. There are, so there are an, an, numerous examples of the benefits of technology for the market participant. Uh, one that should have happened, but not yet, is a consolidated tape. It's rather simply, technologically speaking, at least we are pretty sure that we have the technology to do that. Um, it has not yet happened in Europe. Uh, we may also uh, consider that technology could bring um, or could favor uh, a consolidated quotation system despite multiple trading venues, that is to say, on pre-trade transparency. But of course, this is not technology that will um, help us to uh, change the balance between the lit venues and the dark ones. So of course, the revision of the directive MIFID um, should do it and we hope it will happen. Uh, but may, let's uh, let also uh, 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 give you an example on another area than, ven than trading venues where technology may help in the near future. Uh, I will just say a few words about post-trading area. The clearing obligations introduced by the regulation, the European market infrastructure regulation, will improve the robustness of the markets and so on. But 
the, these new clearing obligations involve also counterparty risk at the level of the clearing member for a short period of time, more than, than before. And we think, for example, this is an area where technology can help to lessen this risk. Uh, for example, in reducing its time period and helping to control it. Uh, similarly, we, we think that uh, new softwares, new service offerings in the area of collateral management we could help to um, cope with the scarcity of collateral. Um, so, of course, regulators should monitor these developments and be wary of any risk associated. And we hope that we can help uh, to use these technologies for the transition towards a new regulatory framework in post-trading area. Well, but to some extent, in many areas in the economy, there is no need to regulate the technology. In a perfect and efficient market economy, technology is naturally used for the good, at least in principle. Uh, but as concerns the organization of the market, we are in a different situation. Why? Because the market is the organization of the market is clearly for us a public good. A public good because of the risk um, that can uh, bring um, dysfunctioning of the markets. And of course, because this is a key element of the allocation of capital uh, in the economy. <coughs> to some extent, that's why those markets are regulated. Uh, so first, we have two kind of two set of uh, 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 preoccupation. The first one, I will not too much focus on it. Operational risk. Um, it's obvious now. We have several. We had several accidents. Um, we have the new a new kind of accidents, like the the electronic version of. The fat finger, the famous fat finger types of errors. So that's very clear that technology is being used uh, by market participant platforms with today an insufficient capacity and ability to face emergency con conditions. So it must improve. This has been the focus mainly in the U.S. Uh, 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 on, in the discussion of, in the U.S. on this issue. But I, I would like to focus more on another aspect. Technology has structural impacts on the microstructure of the markets with potential effects, many potential effects. First, large-scale use of trading algorithms may create and endogeneity in financial markets. It's not new, but it could be exacerbated. Price changes can then occur without exogenous causes, only re reflecting feedback processes. Um, as a consequence, small oscillations in the market price can be amplified, which generates higher volatility, like in a La Larsen effect where a loop between a microphone and a loudspeaker, loudspeaker creates a squealing noise. Uh, we may also face uh, a, new, uh, a new kind of liquidity crash, or at least extraordinarily rapid liquidity crash, which is something, again, it has happened in the, the past, but it's much more rapid. <coughs> uh, of course, I can quote some e recent examples. Uh, I won't do it to be more rapid. Um, but more than that, uh, we think that we risk to lose investors' confidence in financial markets. I will give two examples where the question of technology, the impact of technology, should be assessed and 
um, may be corrected. High frequency trading and best execution. High frequency trading, well, it's a well known uh, issue now. Um, we have the first thing I think we should say on it is that high frequency trading changes, in our view, the word, the definition of liquidity. Uh, uh, a very simple example. We know that we have, we have a lot of studies around the impact of technology on liquidity. The liquidity is assessed mainly through the, um, the BDASC, the, oh, the spread. Uh, but if you look at the uh, order books, globally you can see indeed, as usual, the, the, the BDAS, the, the best limits. But if you look microsecond after microsecond, this is not something linear. This is plenty of all, little all. I had a, a slide, but I won't, I won't bother you with <coughs> a complex slide. That means that the measurement of liquidity should change. It's, n it's no more the usual tools that can use, be used to uh, measure African, um, sorry, the, 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 the liquidity of the market. Of course, there is also the question of uh, the depths at the best limits. They are much lower than before. And we should take into account that in the real life, usually you do not want just to sell or buy one one share, but a certain amount of share. And uh, today, the depths at the, first, at the um, uh, best limits are very thin. So first of all, that means that we need to assess uh, the impact of technology. We need to change also our measures. The second um, <coughs> element is the issue of order sent without, without a real intent to trade. We think now we are pretty sure that there are some orders like that. And of course, here again, it changes how you can appreciate the functioning of the market. Uh, it can, of course, discourage investors from posting orders and cause them to prefer to trade outside late markets or to withdraw from the market altogether. Technology can also generate inequality in the access of the market. Of course, it has always been the case that we have always, it is a competition. So uh, you had always some brokers with better investment, with uh, well, uh, better capabilities, having an advantage vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, 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 their competitors. But today we should really consider whether this arms race this technolo technological arms race, um, arms race, sorry, uh, is economically sound, efficient. Uh, again, if we can raise this question, this is because we are here in front of a public good. Of course, the last issue with high frequency trading is the possibility to use it for market abuse. I won't um, um, elaborate on that, but uh, it's also a clear problem we face, at least as regulators. <coughs> so clearly we need a better identification of the various strategies in place including through better access to relevant data, 
today to assess the functioning of the market, it is very clear that we need more data than globally the regulatory community um, as for as today. For example, the book orders, the orders book. So we we need really to deepen the um, the um, reflection and study on on this issue. Uh, very shortly, uh, another example of possible problem is associated with technologies, um, which is something less uh, today uh, raised. Uh, best execution. That's a wonderful idea. Uh, and the use of technology is a priori welcome. But if we do not take care about that, technology is, is also a vector to simplify the concept of better execution. And if we simplify too much the concept of better, of better execution, we will face a situation where we will create new monopolies, not the old monopolies of trading venues, but monopolies for those technical devices that are supposed to be, to offer every day, every second, the best execution. So we should take care of that because it, will, it may change dramatically the system around the trading values. <laughs> In fact, over-reliance over on technology here may hide the fact that best execution cannot be a too simple, simple concept and maybe we should not fully follow the, the US example here. Uh, another question which is in our view not sufficiently, another view on technology is insufficiently taken into account, it is its cost. Technology as a cost. Um, so we should ask several questions. Uh, does, does the cost this, of this arms race I've, I've, I've um, um, expressed uh, earlier is economically uh, beneficial for the community? And we should take care about all costs. The cost, of course, the investment in IT for traders. The cost of upgrading the market infrastructure because they have to support the volume. They have to create a new um, system to uh, to lessen the, um, the um, um, operational risks. And we should take also into account the cost for supervisors, which is the supervisors are usually paid by the market participants. Um, and uh, I think we should make an economic study on, on, uh, on, on this aspect. So, in another word, aren't we in a sort of technical overshoot? <coughs> well, as a conclusion, uh, I think that, uh, again, we should not be against technology, and technology can help to um, um, can help the regulator, can help the regulatory framework to cope with those new challenges. Um, there are several, on, on high frequency trading, there are several aspects where we can um, um, change some elements to cope with those new challenges. Uh, uh, one thing which is very important is fee structure. I recall that we had, in the several uh, years ago, we had monopolies taking 
care to some extent of this probably public good, which are the, the trading values. We are no more in this um, um, landscape. And today, that means that the fee structure of trading values, I don't speak about the level of fees, but the fee structure may have an impact on the functioning of the market and may also be geared by commercial point of view. And there is no fundamental reason why those two preoccupations always uh, lead always to the same um, uh, results. So we think that the regulator should have a say, a possible say, on the fee structure of trading venues. This one element we think we should uh, work on is the question whether the fees should be imposed on the overall messaging traffic in trading venues rather than some messages and not others. Thirdly, a way to limit the possible negative impact of high frequency trading. I, again, I say to limit the possible negative impact of high frequency trading. I do not say to stop the high frequency trading. Uh, could be to introduce a new tick size regime. We have noticed by our studies that uh, uh, the tick size regime has a great impact on uh, the functioning of the market and especially on high frequency trade. To conclude, uh, again, we, we think that, I think that we should not try to make a triad against technology. Uh, we should just take into account that we have two dynamics here. One, a regulatory one, MIFID, a change in the landscape. Second, a change, a fundamental, fundamental evolution of technology around the markets. And since the markets are public good, we think that the regulators are legitimate, or the global, the global community, including regulators, are legitimate to, to look at the impact on technology, maybe sometimes to avoid, to avoid slippage, inefficient slippage, also to use technology to better regulate the market. So again, in the end, the issue is not so much technology, but simply the recognition of the fact that the organization of the markets and the microstructure of the market is simply uh, um, a public good, that is to say, something of the interest of the community, and not only on part of the finance. Thank you.